Good day, friends. Welcome back. I'm digging up this street sign. We have to move it back. It's actually on my property. We're going to move it over to the edge of the right of way and we're cutting out the concrete, breaking it, hauling it off so we can do a driveway approach so we can get two parking spots here beside this unit. We've got 14 days left in this build process and it's going to be close. Ryan is laying out our starter course. It's imperative that we use a laser and we get a perfectly straight line to start the floor or else we're going to fight it the whole way. I went out ahead of everybody and sanded. John was behind me vacuuming. This is the paper that we use. It's called Aquabar. It's a good vapor barrier. It also gives us a slight cushion. We've laid out all of our bundles. John's gonna break them open and rack them so Ryan can come behind everybody and just start slamming them in. Here's a good detail of sanding the floor seams. If we have any crumbs or humps, we'll probably feel it. We're not gonna do a full drum power sand on this floor. We're just gonna install it and buff it. That's one of the tricks I use to build property management in to the ADU. That way, later, if we ever wanna sell this, we can always refinish it then. Um, that's how we keep real hardwood floors and keep them pet friendly is by installing them, buffing them, and then putting three coats of oil on. Our laser here that we're gonna use to get a perfectly straight start line, sanding the seams, vacuum between every sanding, vacuum at the end of every day and at the start of each day. If we get any little particles underneath the floor, we might feel it. Here's an example of that right here. A little piece of texture. Ryan has everything lined out here with the laser. He's going in and face nailing. So most of the nailing on a wood floor is done with a blind nail where we shoot through the tongue. But on the starter course, we put a bunch of face nails in there. So as we slam the boards into place, we don't throw our line off. And Ryan is flying. So everything is racked out ahead of him. And all he has to do is set it and nail it. John's back here ahead of him, racking out the back bedroom and the closet. In 2004, he taught me how to install and finish real hardwood floors. So this is the first floor I fully turned over. I'm, I'm completely hands off on this one. And there's nobody else I'd rather pay than my friends, true craftsmen who taught me how to lay floor two decades ago. Wrapping up the end of a long day, we've got a good start on our oak floor and John has racked everything out ahead of us. The hallway is racked, both bedrooms are racked. That means that it's already laid out and the starter and end boards are cut. So it'll slam in really quick. This is 810 square feet, the whole house. And we're putting hardwood in every room except for the bathrooms that are tile. And we should be done with this in about two and a half days. That's with two to three people working. Ryan over here installing a paper boy. It's a small strip up against the wall. We want to leave a quarter inch for expansion at all times. This is our entry doorknob. It's a keyed entry. The other types of knobs we would have is a privacy knob that would have a lockable end like this for the interior and then a passage knob which wouldn't lock. Those are the three lock set types. Here we have our knob cylinder. This is going to engage into our striker plate which will mount on the jam. This is our deadbolt cylinder. So I lay everything out. I've got all my packages open. The first thing I do is pre-drill everything. Even though this is a fiberglass door and I don't have to worry too much about splitting. Just a professional way to do it. It only takes another second. And you always want to make sure that your cylinder is pointed towards the striker. If this is backwards, obviously your door is not going to close. Next step is to put the lock sets together. We just want to check our throw both ways and then cinch it down. We don't want to get these bubba tight. I put a little bit of Loctite on both of the screws for the deadbolt cylinder and for the latch cylinder. And then we tighten them down snug and then check their service both ways. Behind me is our simple closet pack detail that we go with most of the time. We've got a double shelf and pole on one side. I set those at 40 and 80 off the floor. And then on the right side, we have a single pole at 66 inches. That's what I've found works best over the years. You've got twice the footage on one side and then stuff um, that's long 
can hang on the high side. We also put a shelf up top and then we put these little coat racks in the corner for ties or belts or whatever the tenant needs to hang up, but try to maximize all the space you can with your simple closet design. John from American Hardwood Floors and more. Tell us why you love a real hardwood floor. It's something that's gonna outlive all of us. You know, it's gonna be here 7,500 years. Uh, it's resurfaceable numerous times, unlike LVP. It's, it's hard, it's clean. It forces you to keep your house clean, you know? What would somebody expect to pay for an install and a finish? I get a lot of questions about price and it's like, oh, I love hardwood, but it's five times more expensive than anything else. Can you just run through some quick pricing? Uh, yeah, you know, if, it depends on footage. You know, when you start getting over a couple thousand feet, uh, the price goes down on the install to about 250. Uh, generally, my price to install is about four bucks. And to sand and finish, the real sand and finish is about four bucks with an oil base on there. Price goes up with water, stains. This wood's probably going about, what, 350 uh, a foot right now? I so paid you can, three, yeah, you know, 340 10 to 12 a foot. bucks, you can cover a wood floor. And like I said, it's gonna be in there 75 years. You multiply, uh, you know, carpet, tile, and all that stuff, and putting it in four or five times, uh, it's gonna uh, cost more than the hardwood, for sure. Awesome, thanks, yep. John. Right on. Tools that we use for a hardwood floor install are fairly affordable. We use a chop saw, he's got a pneumatic, floor nailer behind me. Those are about 250 bucks. You need an air compressor and then a finish gun. To finish it, you can go rent a buffer or you can rent either a drum sander or an oscillating sander or a vibratory sander. So those are the options you have if you feel like you're gonna DIY the project. Um, actually simpler than you would think, just a lot of hard work. Here's the simple chop saw that we're using. This is a battery powered chop saw with a 10 inch blade and all the tools you'll need to become a floor guy or girl or person. Now that the back ADU floor is done, we're gonna putty it out. We're gonna fill all the major side seams and butt seams with this red oak putty. If you have a big side seam like over here where our edge nailing was, you can just float it in. So all get taken off with the trio. We don't wanna over apply the putty because then it's gonna take us more time to sand it off with the trio. If we were gonna do a full drum sand on this, it wouldn't matter, but by keeping the drum sander in the truck, we're saving about a thousand bucks. Here's our crawl space. We cut in individual pieces. You can see Ryan chased the grain through the crawl space access hatch. Did a beautiful job. With the wood floor all done and filled, we had to make a choice on when we wanted to seal it. So I could seal it today. We'd buff it real quick, hit it with the trio, and seal it and then I have to seal it again within 24 hours two more times. So it kind of locks me out of the house to do any other work for the next three days once we decide to seal. We've got the cabinets showing up tomorrow. So what I did is decided to not seal the floor until I get the cabinets in and the countertops and pretty much everything trimmed out and we'll do the floor last. So I'll call John, he'll come back middle of the week a few days from now and we'll do the final sanding buffing of the floor then and i'll put the first coat on the next day i can do the second and the following day i can do the third so keep in mind if you're gonna do a real sand and seal in place hardwood floor that you really lose three days not only do you have to do the sealing uh, or the coating or the stain whatever finish you choose you're also going to be stuck outside the building for the rest of the day on those three days while the product dries so we're gonna go ahead and continue working. I'm gonna install the toilets right now. I'm gonna install the last couple of light fixtures and we'll keep moving in an efficient manner. Uh, and that does mean working over the raw floor. Another advantage to that is we don't have to worry about scuffs or scratches on this floor or dragging stuff across it because we still have to sand it. This is the plumbing parts getter. I've got three toilets in the back of the Subaru. This is old trusty. She has 403,000 miles on her. I was told really early on in my career by a really successful investor, he said, as a blue collar worker, you can look wealthy or you can be wealthy. It's hard to do both for the first couple of decades. So yes, this is my daily driver. And yes, there are three box store toilets in there. We love this product. It's a local box store brand, but it has a Fluid Master three inch flapper. It's basically an American standard knockoff toilet. They're 95 bucks and they work amazing. We have dozens of these toilets and have never had a problem. So that's what we're using. 
I like to unbox these right at the driveway so I can take all the cardboard and styrofoam right into the back of the truck that's going to the dump and we don't have to make a bunch of trips back and forth. A little tip to save you some time. I just took a quick break and took a call from Elliot and his wife down in Sacramento, California. They had a consultation. They had a bunch of questions about saving money on their ADU design. I do offer consultations. I usually try to talk people out of that. Go watch all the content that I put out on Instagram and YouTube, it's all free. If you feel like you've watched all of my videos and you still need one-on-one -on -one time, only then do I recommend people pay me for my time one-on-one. -on -one. We're gonna slam in three toilets really quick. I'm gonna go over the parts that you'll need. Before we mount the toilet, I always like to seal the grout lines and the base lines behind the toilet while we have access. Bam. Uh, this is a supply line. I usually get a 12 inch supply line because we put our stops behind the toilet right under the tank. Uh, this is a extra thick wax ring. These come with a one inch ring and I like to get an inch and a half ring just because after we set our tile down, it raises the finished floor a little bit higher than the actual closet flange. And then this is our toilet. We're gonna mount the seat real quick and then we're gonna mount the tank. It shouldn't take us more than five minutes to get this toilet in. Seat the wax ring on here. I like to spin it around a couple times to get it to really stick. And then I center the hole. Now we'll be ready to flip it over and mount it. Next, I'm putting my anchor bolts into the flange and I pay extra to get brass bolts. Some of the cheaper zinc coated uh, closet flange bolts I've seen fail over the years. So get brass if you can. It's Sunday morning, I may or may not have had way too much mate. I almost forgot to pop the knockout. So this is a test cap still in the closet flange here. So we have to break this three inch hole out so our waist has somewhere to go. And then I'll grab it with a pair of pliers or a pair of channel locks. Then we just pry this thing out of here. And everybody has a different standard, but I like to make sure that if there's any burr or rough edge here from the glue or from the knockout, that I just trim it real quick. We don't need any toilet paper hanging up on some piece of glue sticking out. It just takes a second. I also like to put my supply line on. I just get it finger tight. So if I have to put a loop in it, uh, it's not gonna bind and then I'll tighten them both up. Wax rings installed. Everybody has their own system here. I like to stand right over the toilet where I can look down on the bolt holes. Number one rule too is uh, tighten your belt so you don't look like a plumber. So I can see the bolt holes here. And I'm gonna go right down on them just like that. Now I want that wax ring to settle, so I'm gonna wiggle the toilet back and forth, and then I'm gonna put my level across here, I'll shim it if needed, and tighten it down hand tight, and then we'll mount the tank. Squishing that wax ring down into place, checking my bolts, making sure that we're centered here. This actually went in really nicely. Put a couple of shims in the back and then I'm going to tighten these down finger tight, not bubba tight because you'll break the porcelain. Make sure there's no rattle and then we'll put a bead of white 100% pure silicone as per plumbing code. Put the tank on next. See this bad boy. And then I'll put the washer and lock nut. Again, these are finger tight. They're set up with a wing nut so you can't over tighten them. If you get these bubba tight, you can break the tank. So again, hand tight on everything on the toilet. Tighten up the seat. Quick tip here, I put a little bit of Elmer's glue underneath the tabs of the seat so over time it doesn't adjust and then I get it super tight, crank it down. Close those, I'll pop my hinge here, slight score, and I'll take our caps and cover our bolts. Sometimes these bolts are a little bit too long and your caps won't fit, 
So it's a lot easier to cut those first and those snap into place. And now we can turn our water on. These are compression fitting at the supply line so we don't have to over tighten those. And I'll check the first flush and we have a brand new toilet. $95, takes about five minutes to install it and the tenant's gonna have a brand new toilet that nobody's ever used. Just making sure that there's no water pouring out the bottom, we don't have any drips, our wax ring has a great seal and uh, a accomplishment to have a sewage system that fully works from tying in out at the street in one of the earlier videos to laying the 2% DWV waistline and then tying into our ABS waistline under the house. There's been a lot of steps that have got us to here where we can flush the toilet and use it and get rid of that stinky porta potty out front. Getting ready to move this shed to the back of the property so we can make room for the curb cut here where we're gonna have two nine by 19 parking spots beside this ADU. We have our driveway approach just about formed up. We're gonna call for inspection from the city. They're gonna come out and confirm that the slope is within specs, that it's not too wide, that the opening's not too narrow. Pat's working out here. It's gonna be 100 degrees today. Nothing better than watching Pat sweat. No, but really thankful to have him out here. We're gonna pour this thing tomorrow, let it cure for a day or two, and then we'll be able to actually drive up beside our ADU and have a couple of parking spots. We've got to be eight inches on our curb and then six inches thick of concrete on our approach cut. We had to lower the vault box here. This is the clean out cover. It was a little bit high and we're going to be on a 2% slope off the wings, leaving us approximately a 13 foot opening. In our area, we don't put rebar in the approaches or the pads for residential only if it's an commercial approach. So the last step here is going to be to wet and compact all of our three quarter inch minus to get a nice good base to pour onto. The city public works department just came out and gave us approval to pour on Friday. So feeling good about that. While the whacker is still here, we used it to compact the parking spots. Eventually we'll pour concrete pad back there, but not right out of the gate. Pardon the no shirt, it's like 100 degrees. I'm operating a piece of equipment on the other side of the house and I'm sweating bullets. Avista is on site with six trucks, six guys. They're bringing us our gas service right now. They're tying into the high pressure two inch poly and we're doing what's called a mole where they dig a hole and they shoot an underground torpedo basically um, from hole to hole so they don't have to disrupt as much ground. Uh, hopefully we don't kill this little plum tree here that's the process. Avista gas, in our area at least, is the one utility that they bring you for free. So we're stoked to get our gas meters coming in. Michaels, the contractor for Avista gas on site. We've got Frank, he's their fitter. He's gonna be tying into the main. Frank, tell us what you're doing today. Yes, yeah, so we're gonna be welding a service tee onto the gas, natural gas main. We're gonna be running a service to the first house and branching it off to the second with the polyurethane pipe. Over here in the OSHA approved trench, they've got all their safety gear on. They're tying in the private laterals. So we're going from two inch steel down to half inch high pressure poly that's gonna feed each of these residential meter units so we can run our gas appliances. Jobs coming together. Here is the after shot of the mole work. So as opposed to digging up all this area right beside the house within five feet of the foundation, as well as underneath that plum tree there, we were able to shoot a mole. The guys uh, at Michael's did a bunch of extra work to save the tree. We're super stoked on that. We've got Frank over here in the hole. He's mounting the upright for our meter. He's trying to keep the upright 10 inches away from the house and he wants to be approximately 18 inches from the inlet. We also wanna make sure that our diaphragm on the meter isn't within 36 inches of a window opening or any other sparking appliance. We're in compliance. Up in the loft hanging these little low profile puck lights. There's a lot of different lighting systems you can use in your ADU. I like these pucks for a couple of reasons. One, they're cheap, they're about $6 each. There's a link to my shopping guide down below if you're interested in the products I use. 
Um, they're also really efficient. So these are LED, they're dimmable. We always put a dimmer switch on our bedrooms and our lofts. And then we just have a simple four inch box here and it's really shallow. So that means this whole cavity, this two by 12 roof section here, this whole bay is insulated. If we were to use a big deep can light that a lot of people use, not only are they a lot more expensive, but they're a lot less efficient because that leaves a spot for heat transfer to come up to the outside of your building. And you have that hot, cold transfer that builds up moisture and you can get mold in your ceiling. So that's why we go with these nice flat lights to install it real quick. Uh, obviously make sure your circuits are off, make sure you're tested. Everybody has their own system. Um, the order of operations that they hook everything up. Here's the ground, and then we simply have a black and a white. We still don't have power to this ADU, so I'm going to uh, not worry about getting electrocuted. And then to mount these to the wall, we simply attach these two screws into our box, just snug up to the floor. So this line disappears. We don't want to over tighten them. And then we just take the globe cover and voila, we're done. $6 adjustable LED light with great insulation principles above it. We're on the home stretch now. Our cabinets just showed up. Thomas just dropped them off. These are custom made locally by Thomas and his dad at Jackson Creek Caseworks. I paid $68 hundred dollars for all the cabinets that includes the uppers and lowers for the both front and back ADU and all three bathroom vanities. It's a great deal. Most of the time I tell people look for a local custom cabinet shop, build a relationship with them and you can get your cabinets cheaper than you could go buy modular stuff at a box store. These are great clear alder shaker style full extension drawers. I'm going to be putting them up in next week's video since we're running out of time. So make sure to tune in then. Feel free to like and subscribe, ask questions, leave comments down below. Tell us what you want to see so we can make more videos to help you.